Hello and welcome to another useful video. In today's video we're going to be describing and going over everything that you need to know about buying a used Porsche Panamera. I own a Panamera and I love it so I decided to make this video for others that may be interested in purchasing this wonderful car. So to start the 970 chassis Panamera was produced between 2010 through 2016 for the USA market. It was designed to be a four-passenger four-door coupe with enough headroom to allow tall passengers to sit in the back comfortably. Although a departure from small nimble sports cars that Porsche is known for, the Panamera intended to be a sedan that drives like a Porsche. And with sales of the Cayenne SUV helping the brand to thrive, the decision to introduce the Panamera was made. As you can see, the idea of a four-door Porsche was not a new one. And in fact, in the late 80s and early 90s, Porsche introduced the 989 prototype, which was basically a four-door 911. The idea behind this vehicle was that it would give you 911 style driving characteristics while allowing you to carry four passengers and all of their cargo. And the reason this prototype never came into fruition is because the financial state of Porsche was pretty dismal in the late 80s and early 90s. As for engines for the Panamera, for the 2010 model year you had the option of the Panamera S, Panamera 4S, and Panamera Turbo. All of these models had a V8 with the turbo adding a set of turbochargers to the engine to get to 500 horsepower. The S and 4S models both produced 400 horsepower. In 2011, the Panamera introduced the V6 option, which is basically the V8 engine minus two cylinders. The V6 made 300 horsepower. Now later versions include a hybrid and a GTS, which had a naturally aspirated V8 making 430 horsepower. The engines used in the Panamera are generally robust and deliver excellent power and response. However, there are some issues to be aware of before your purchase. First, there is currently a recall on the camshaft bolts used to hold the camshaft adjuster to the engine. The bolts used in the engine were aluminum and will be replaced with steel units. The aluminum bolts can share or break, causing engine damage and in many cases complete engine failure. Check with the seller to make sure this recall has been completed on your vehicle if you're looking to purchase one. This recall is for the 2010 to 2012 Panamera models. Models made after 2012 are not affected. The recall campaign is AH08. Second, the coolant pipes, which are generally metal, are affixed to the engine using epoxy. Over time, the epoxy can fail and the pipes can leak coolant. It is recommended to fix this issue by drilling a hole in the coolant tube and fastening using a screw and new epoxy. Third, there's the issue of oil consumption. Now, some owners of early Panameras are complaining of excessive oil consumption, especially on the V8 and turbo models. Now, this may be due to the materials used in the engine, but newer models don't seem to be affected by this. And generally, I would say the engines in the Panamera are robust and reliable and deliver excellent performance for the driver. The Panamera comes standard with the 7-speed CFPK dual-clutch transmission. This transmission can be shifted by the driver manually using the steering wheel paddles or the shifter itself. The unit is designed to get to 7th gear as soon as possible in normal driving mode. The transmission starts in 2nd gear as 1st gear is very short. There is a sport button that will make the PDK transmission shift more urgently and stay in gear longer, especially when driving aggressively. If the car is equipped with the Sports Chrono package, you will have a Sports Plus feature. When the Sports Plus button is depressed, the transmission will start in 1st gear, shift aggressively, and not use 7th gear. Sports Chrono Package will also give the car launch control. To use this feature to get the fastest acceleration time, make sure the engine is in normal operating temperature, activate Sports Plus mode, press the brake with the left foot, floor the accelerator with the kick down button activated with the right foot, and let go of the left foot. The transmission also has a start stop function which allows the driver to get maximum fuel efficiency. There is a button on the dashboard to turn this feature off. The PDK transmission is pretty robust and designed to last the life of the vehicle. As for issues, some owner complain of jerky shifts or takeoffs. This can usually be cured by a software update from the dealer. So let's move on to the exterior. The exterior looks, in my opinion, look great, but I'll leave the styling judgments up to you. In terms of the colors available for the Panamera, there's a lot of different color options available from red to blue, silver, black, white. Pretty much all of the colors of the spectrum are represented with the Panamera, so if you're looking for a specific color, I think if you wait or you look hard enough, you should be able to find the color that you're looking for. Um, as for the exterior robustness of the vehicle, I would say the body panels, the gaps, the materials used, 
all of the trim and the molding are very high quality. The things that I've noticed from my personal experience are that the, the paint gets surface scratches very easily, so you might have to consistently polish or wax the vehicle to maintain a scratch-free exterior. Uh, in addition to that, when you're driving on the freeway a lot, I have noticed that the vehicle is prone to get some nicks and chips from rocks uh, actually damaging the paint. And so the paint is a little bit softer than most vehicles, but it's not bad and it is of very high quality. The vehicle also sits pretty low, so if you don't have the air suspension, you might be scraping when you leave a driveway or things like that. Now the turbo model comes with this really nice looking uh, spoiler that gets wider as it comes out. The regular Panameras other than the GTS have just the single level spoiler which still looks good and is functional. So overall I'd say the Panamera is a really nice looking car that's made of very high quality materials and the exterior robustness is very tough. The interior on the Panamera is simply gorgeous. All of the materials used are very high quality and the overall design is very ergonomic and the gauges are super nice. They remind you of a 911 which is the way a Porsche should be. Now the vehicle has four seats and they all fit full size grown tall adults no problem. This is the GTS interior with the GTS interior package which has half suede and Alcantara. There's also different colors for the interior. This is another interior color which is a red and black combination. There's also black, there's tan, there's beige, there's brown. So there's a lot of different uh, interior combinations available. The main thing you'll notice on the interior is that it's got a PCM 3.1 screen. That's a touch screen and it has all of your vehicle's pertinent information on that screen. Uh, the vehicle also has a lot of different options you can get. You can get full leather adjustable adaptive sports seats, full leather wrap dash, door panels. There's a base stereo, a Bose stereo, and the Burmester stereo. There's electric windshield or windscreens that you can get for the rear window and for the rear windshield. You can also get heated and cooled seats. So the interior options are abound. There's also a four zone climate control that'll actually give the rear separate climate controls as well as a separate air conditioning compressor as well. So the interior is a really, really nice place. Probably one of the strongest suits about the 970 Panamera. It's simply stunning, it's sumptuous, and it's just a wonderful place to spend time while you're driving. When it comes to options, there's so many that you can get on the Panamera. It's kind of mind blowing. But to begin, there's the sports exhaust. This is the electronically controlled exhaust with a button on the dashboard. When you press the exhaust button on the dashboard, the valves open on the mufflers, giving you a throaty or exhaust note. Also, on most of the Panameras, when you do select this option, you get uh, more aggressive looking exhaust tips, which really finish off the car and add to the joy of driving along with the great exhaust note that you do get with that. Then there's the carpet ceramic brakes. These are essentially racing brakes and provide consistent fade-free stops. While parts are expensive, if you have to replace them, the brakes generally last the life of the vehicle. As a bonus, they exhibit almost zero brake fade. I know I can appreciate that. Then there's also wheels. So the Panamera comes with 18 inch wheels standard and there are also 19 inch wheels and 20 inch wheels available as well. In my opinion, the smaller wheels don't do the car justice. So I'd recommend going with the 20 inch wheels. Uh, my personal favorite wheels for the Panamera are either the Turbo S style wheels or the uh, actual sport classic wheels that kind of have a Fuchs look like the one on this blue Porsche. Other than that, there's also the Sports Chrono Package. So mentioned earlier, this gives you crisper shifts, launch control, a dash-mounted clock, and stopwatch and Sports Plus mode, so definitely something to consider there. There's also the Porsche Active Suspension Management, PASM. This feature gives you an adjustable dampening suspension used to basically adjust the dampers to your driving style. Then there's also Porsche Dynamic Chassis Control, and this feature gives you active roll bars that aid in the handling of the vehicle. So these are some options to think about other than the actual other options that you can get such as a more luxurious interior, uh, Porsche Entry and Go which is basically a keyless ignition system. So there's just a lot of different things that you can get on the Porsche but those were the main ones I wanted you guys to be aware of. Whether you're looking for wheels or a complete wide body kit for the Panamera, the aftermarket is alive and well for this vehicle. There's a lot of different tuning shops out there that have made custom spoilers, wide body kits, wheels, engine ECU tuning boxes, uh, performance chips, and pretty much everything else that you can imagine for the Panamera. 
So it is a car that you can tinker with and you can modify and you can make faster or handle better if you so choose to. And there are a lot of different styling options out there for you if you want to take your car from mild to wild. So it's definitely a vehicle out there that has an active aftermarket support. There's a lot of companies out there and there's so many different variations of the Panamera when it's modified that it can literally blow your mind. Like any other car, the Panamera does have some common issues that you should be aware of before purchasing your vehicle. In general, before purchasing the car, I just recommend that you find the nicest, cleanest, accident-free example that you can. Look closely at the bodywork for paintwork or ask the dealer or seller to provide you with a paint meter so that you can test each individual panel to make sure the paint thickness is the same. Additionally, you'll want to make sure that they have full service records and that you'll want to make sure that they've only used genuine Porsche replacement parts. Now, having said that, some common areas to check for noises, creaks, or damage would be the front and rear suspension. When the temperature is cold outside, the suspension can creak and it can cause a lot of different noises. Now, it's been known that on the earlier Panameras, Porsche used a weak bushing design, and what alleviates this problem is changing the control arms, all the bushings and everything, and greasing them very, very nicely to avoid any noises. Second, you'll want to make sure that all of the interior electronics work. While very reliable, every now and then you can have an electronic fault. For example, my vehicle required the complete replacement of the PCM system, which is the navigation system. So that's another thing to be mindful of. Uh, in addition to that, if you don't regularly maintain the vehicle, that could cause an issue as well. Uh, for example, you do have to replace the PDK oil every 60,000 miles. You'll also want to check the operation of the rear spoiler and make sure that's working correctly. Uh, because that comes up at 60 miles an hour, unless you manually bring it up, it'll go down and up a lot during a drive. So you'll want to make sure that that's working correctly. If the vehicle's equipped with the optional air suspension, you'll want to make sure that it fully operates. Uh, the compressors have been no known to be a little bit noisy on the Panamera, uh, but the vehicle should lower and raise fully without any issue or hesitation. Also on top of that, you'll want to check the brakes to make sure that they don't squeak. Uh, while squeaky brakes are pretty normal, especially with the size of the brakes that the Panamera has that are a high performance brake, you'll just want to check that as it can get annoying. Uh, another thing that you'll want to check is you'll want to check for rust. Even though the car isn't known for rust, uh, you don't want to get surprised in that way as well. Um, and also check uh, the other things that I've mentioned about the PDK transmission and the engine previously. But overall, the Panamera is a very reliable car in general, especially for being a flagship style luxury cruiser it's pretty reliable. There's a lot of, lot of examples out there with more than 100,000 miles. There you have it. That's our video presentation for the Porsche Panamera. Please hit that like and subscribe button and have a great day.